Anyway, how's it going guys? Welcome back to a new video. This is kind of a continuation. Sorry. This is kind of a continuation of a previous video. But this was like in the middle of that video I was going to show you guys how to do this. In the last video we uh, redid my lights. But that might come out after this. I don't know. Either way, it doesn't matter. We are working on headlights. So we're going to be installing some daytime running lights strips. I've got strips in them. You've probably seen them before. But uh, a lot of people have asked for like an in-depth video on how to install them. So uh, we've got a set over here. Um, I want to sell my old headlights because I'm no longer using them as I have new spec ones in. So I thought I'd show you guys basically a how-to on installing them and as in-depth as I can go. So uh, to start us off, I'll show you guys we have a couple of tools. So first things first, obviously you need a pair of headlights. Uh, you don't need them, but I mean, you know, it's good to have if you're going to install strips in them. Then you would need strips itself. These are the new replacement strips. Uh, the ones I have in there are RGB. These are not, but these are just plain white and amber. A lot more LEDs that you can kind of see the LEDs itself, how many of them there are, which is really great because uh, it diffuses the light really well. Um, whereas this one had a problem with it, which is multiple, and you could see the individual LEDs, which nobody's really a fan of. Then glue. These do come with double-sided tape, but the double-sided tape is pretty bad. I found this. Um, I used to get this at Pick and Pay. They all sell it at Brights, like 50 bucks per box or per one. It's got a little brush that you can physically brush on the um, glue. It works quite nicely, especially when you're working on the strips. Um, something I don't have here. I usually have pegs with me. Pegs just to hold the strip down because the double-sided tape in here is not great. Soldering iron for the wiring. I'm going to try and show you guys everything the wiring and then last but not least Sikaflex for resealing the headlights. These headlights are going to be very easy to open because I resealed them with silicone the last time so just some heat and they should pop loose. Um, if you're doing a fresh set then you're going to have to do the oven method. If I've never explained the oven method before I have once but just in case you're wondering you put the headlights in the oven low heat like 90 to 100 put it in for like seven to eight minutes at a time take it out start to peel like pull the headlight apart piece by piece i normally do it in sessions so i'll do that then it goes back in and it'll go back in three or four times if you let it sit for a little bit longer thing is you've got to find like the sweet spot if you go any longer than like 12 minutes or so or like the heat is a little bit wrong it will start melting the headlight uh, a friend of mine tried it and his entire lens melted into the <laughs> the headlight so you don't want that so it needs to be a low heat but low enough so that the plastic is m malleable it can move either way that's not to stress about we're just going to use a heat gun pop these puppies open and then i'm going to start showing you guys how we do this thanks So as you can see, we've got the lenses off now. Pretty easy. I uh, damaged the eyelid a little bit here, but it's not the end of the world. That'll be okay. I mean, you barely see that. I might replace the eyelids anyway, because this light does need a polish. You can see they're kind of a little bit yellow compared to like how clear those ones are. So either way, now what you're going to want to do is, um, if you don't want to damage the lenses, probably the best, put down some cloth or something just to protect the surface that you're working on. And then... Uh, I'll just lay this down. You can see there's a screw here, a screw up here, and a screw over here. That basically holds this black housing in here, and the black housing is basically what um, holds the LED strips. Because I normally mount them on the inside of these. You can see there. Is that a fly? <laughs> Alright, so uh, they'll mount this. So you're going to, like I said, lay the material down, get those pieces out, and then from there, I'm going to obviously take the strips out and then I'll start showing you guys how to lay the new strips. Alright, so this is obviously the pieces completely out. I've not tried to remove the strips yet. I don't know how it's going to take to the glue that I used. I've never actually tried to remove anything with this glue because it's the same glue I used the last time. Um, it seems to have worked fairly well, but I can see it's still lifted again a little bit. Hopefully, uh, 
it doesn't do that with the next one maybe i'll be a bit more generous with the glue but yeah so we're going to pull these strips out make sure the surface area is decent uh, clean it obviously and then get ready to lay the new strips and then i'll go get some pegs like pe i don't know if oh, yeah. pegs for like what you would use to hold your washing on the line you use those and you just pinch it down on you and we'll hold it in place and the glue will dry quite nicely how long does this stuff take to dry is the question rest in peace that one and i don't actually know either way it'll glue all right so otherwise a bit done for that's because i already tested the strip just to make sure they work before obviously starting this but yeah this again you can see there's leds there's so many of them which i'm really happy about that's just better for you as a user you know because it's going to be um it's going to be much brighter thing because like the spacing the one that i had was basically half this right spacing wise i think possibly even less than half so uh I took the uh, adhesive off. It still has a little bit of adhesion to it, but uh, the adhesive that these strips come with tend to always be very bad. So that's why I always offer the glue. Um, normally I'll start with the furthest corner and then tuck it all the way up. And then in here we'll obviously tuck it behind and this goes into the shroud of the light. So you'll never see that. Um, you can cut these strips. Uh, whether or not I would or wouldn't, I personally probably wouldn't just because I'm kind of scared. But they are cuttable. Uh, I think they do market it as that they can be cut as well. Either way, it doesn't matter. We are going to you can see. I got my pegs, so we're going to start with the corner. I normally trim the corner as well. I cut the edge not onto the actual LED strip, but just to make it tuck a little bit better because this portion of the light is quite tight. And then we're just going to lay the strip all the way down, glue it solid. We do it in portions, as much pegs as we need, and then. Uh, I'll normally do like this piece first, then this corner specifically because this one's quite a tough one, then this corner here, and then from there it's just straight up. And then normally, obviously, I have the eyelids. The eyelids basically come like over here, so anything up here you don't see, but just for good measure, you might as well make sure it's fast over there. So as you can see, I've already laying the strip. I make sure to push it like deep into the groove. The nice thing with these lights, they have like a perfect little groove that these slip into when you put pressure. So it's it works really well on these lights. And then, like I said, I just put multiple pegs. I'll let that dry. Once those dry up, then I'll start moving over. I thought I had enough pegs. I do have roughly enough, but I'm trying to be a bit more aggressive with the adhesive. So I'm going to go get a lot more so then I can just start running the rest of the strip. I might be able to do an entire light with that strip alone, uh, with the amount of pegs that I have. So uh, I might try and do that, probably speed up the process a little bit. And then, yeah, so you guys will see that now. I'm going to get some more pegs. And then obviously I just apply the glue onto the strip itself. That should be enough. Then with the pressure, it should be good to go. So we'll see how it goes. You can see the strips are in like i said i wanted to make sure that it conforms to all the lines these are pretty flexible but they need help that's why i use the glue plus the pegs just to make sure that it sticks to the line as smooth as possible the only difficulty are these corners but they're not the end of the world it kind of looks nice when it sweeps anyway a little bit so that's the only thing that i'm never a fan of but as far as adhesion goes you can see it's within minutes so she's already dry 
the strips shouldn't lift I put a lot more glue than I did the last time and the last time they lasted very long so uh, realistically I think the strips will probably die unfortunately before the um, before the glue goes bad if it is ever to go bad so yeah you guys can see this set is done I'm going to tuck this to the back now we can already put this back onto its lens and then we can move over to the next one uh, before I do I will wire this up and just show you guys how it looks on the car um, I'll just put it on my engine bay and then tap the wires and you guys can basically see how it lights up some wiring I have stripped this cable sheathing off this whole thing so uh, you've got your positive negative and then your indicator your indicator gets its ground from the negative on the uh, strip itself normally your uh, park housing is right there and it has a bulb that plugs in let me turn this around here do that for you and this is a bit of a rat's nest but uh, what you mean need to be looking at is this portion right here right so I've already tapped this wire in, but I'm going to strip, take it off anyway, and then what you would do is you're going to peel back the um, the cable, cable stripper. You're basically going to strip this wire and strip that wire, the positive and negative, and then you will tap the positive and negative from this onto that, and then the indicator will tap onto the wire that's in here, which I'll show you guys. You can see there's a little yellow wire there. This is from where I previously tapped it in. And let me try and get that out quickly. Here. All right, so you can see, obviously I didn't do a very good job. I mean, prefer to do a much better job this time around. So this indicator used to run in the previous strips. So then this yellow wire will go inside the housing and then tap into where this one is right here. Once that's done, then that's obviously once you turn the indicators on, then it will send the signal to the strips, thus turning them on. Should be simple. Say that. Um, I'm going to strip this stuff now. Basically, I get the headlights sat in a good position, and then I'll start showing you guys how to wire it up. mounted up here these are basically where the strips are going to enter the headlight 
I have the two power positive and negative coming out this side and then this is running behind the shroud and comes out over here. And then we're going to basically solder these two, or this to the green wire over here, that one. And then these are obviously going to go onto the parks at the back. And yeah, so I'm going to set the camera up and then you guys can see me solder that up together then seal it. I don't have any um, heat shrink, so insulation tape will do, but uh, as long as we solder it together, everything should be good. All right, so as you guys can see, it's all soldered up. This is the indicator that's wired up there. I sealed it and put it in, and obviously I sealed up the positive and negative, and that's also in there. So all we have to do now is put the indicator shroud back in, and then from there we get to seal the headlight. But before I seal it, I will test. I will actually take one of the plugs off my headlights, just plug it into this light and then test the parks and indicators that will show us if it works or not. And then yeah, so I'm probably going to just put that in, put the shroud in now and I'll show you guys that and then we'll just quickly make sure it functions. So you can see it is sicker flexed all the way around. Um, what I normally do is I look for any spots where there's like, if there's a bit too much or a little bit too less, then I will add and then just run a bead along with my finger. That's why I said I like to use gloves because then I can just smooth out the things, try and make sure you kill any grooves that there are. And then there you go. So this one's basically done. Like I said, it just needs a polish and then she's good to go. Uh, we will quickly, put that one back together and then do the same thing.
so the lights are fully dry they are ready to go in the car I said this is my current lights those are my old ones I'm going to take the, these lights off I need to make some adjustments on these ones as well as test with these just to make sure that they function accordingly before I sell them so I can also get photos of that so I have something to show people if it doesn't help I just give the lights like this and tell them it works also peace of mind I want to make sure that it Ugh, pardon me jeez I want to make sure that it does work so uh, I'm gonna take these lights off uh, I don't know if I'll put this into the video of me building the lights but this might be in the other video doesn't matter if you see it you see it Up, so there you have it that's basically how they function um, as you can see they're on <clears throat> I've wired them up so that on standard polos the park lights once you turn the parks on that basically switches on the lights and uh, <clears throat> I don't actually know if they need to be on for the indicators to work let's quickly see um, no actually you can run the indicators without it even better so uh, it works um, I'm pretty happy with it I think uh, they came out really nicely uh, like I said they just need a good polish but uh, I'm gonna do that now and then we should be good to go Yeah, you run with me that a lot.